As a teacher, I'm always looking for different ways to make my learning more exciting. And gamification is something that can support with that. It's something that's often discussed, but not necessarily understood. So hopefully this video is going to share with you some different strategies and steps that you can take to benefit your learning and to keep children more engaged. So this will show you some of the different strategies that I have used in the past to keep my children engaged. And we start with this one. This is the humble quest. When we think of quests, we think of games like Zelda, where people have to go from A to B. And when it comes to learning, that can be something that benefits children too, is to think about that A to B. So starting at one point, and children have to do a range of different tasks to help them unlock certain elements. It can be hard to think about what that looks like sometimes, Thankfully, companies like uh, Twinkle create different myth buster packs where you have to unlock a series of different things to get clues to then get things. But the problem with those is if you're trying to plan that yourself, which is important sometimes, it can be really challenging to get the ideas and to actually create the right outcome. A simple big question can be a really good way to unlock and go through that quest with the children. You start with a big question and then you go through an inquiry-based approach of breaking down that big question into smaller questions that the children then need to unlock and as they're unlocking those different questions then you can start to think about how we are breaking that question down to unlock that bigger question. So it might be something like how were the Paleolithic people different to the Neolithic people if you're looking at Stone Age or something along those lines, then that way children have to break it down and go, oh, what, what on earth is Paleolithic? What's, what's Neolithic? And you can start to break it down into the different time periods, how they're different, farming, all, all sorts of different things to help them ultimately get to that end point of the quest. Next gamification principle is this one. This is badges and levels. Having specific levels that children need to work through to incentivize them to support their own learning. For example, do certain thing five times. In my class in the past, I'm thinking about games like Pokemon, where you have to gain a certain amount of badges to get a reward. Do X five times. I'm thinking the X would be reading, and I've had different displays in the past where children have to read five times at home or do something in the classroom five times to get that specific reward. And one of the best things to do when it comes to badges and levels is to have that final boss battle. So there's all sorts of different games that you can play. If you're thinking about times tables, you can play Around the World, which is a game where children go against each other, and the final person can be go against the boss, and the boss being the teacher. And often you'd be surprised that the children are much better at times tables than Myself, it happens, but that boss battle can be a really good element. You could have class experts who are really good at a certain thing. For example, if you've broken down something by those big questions, you could have that class uh, archaeologist who's going to break that down and they can quiz and question this archaeologist about whatever they're specialised in. And all sorts of different ideas there. And the 2P, just like you'll see in the games, is for two-player. Now, of course, it doesn't just have to be two-player. This is thinking about games and the way that you're going to mix up groups to get children collaborating because collaboration can really benefit children for all sorts of different reasons and not just academics but it can really help with getting children to work together and unlocking some of the things such as quests. One thing that I really think is beneficial when children are going through collaborative phases is having a second life. So if children get it wrong it doesn't matter too much. Children can then have that opportunity to get a second life. What works well is if you've then got another person, let's say they've got something wrong and they are out of whatever activity they're doing, that second person has to work a little bit harder to then get them back into the game or back into the, the lesson that you are doing and get those, those tokens. And that really helps with that motivation and reward. Just a few different ways that you can think about your lessons and to, to bring a little bit of an innovation into your lessons. And hopefully this supports you with how to gamify your lessons and break down what that word actually means a little bit further. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Feel free to like and follow for more teacher training videos, and I'll see you in the next one.